Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. So we are in lockdown 6.0 and last Wednesday we got announcement that Victorians in Melbourne can now travel for up to 15, kilo 15 kilometers from your residence, which is great. Um, however, the weather this weekend doesn't look that all that flash. It's been raining and uh, it's sort of off and on with the rain this weekend, so there's really not much you can do. Um, so I thought I will get on to something that I've been putting off for some time now, which is to talk about the mods that I've got on my V-Strom 650. Now just to give you a bit of uh, background on this, uh, this model here, this is a 2019 uh, Suzuki V-Strom 650 XT. Um, now the XT model uh, comes with a bit of extras, which you get the uh, handguards, you get the um, the belly pan uh, or engine shield, and uh, you get the um, the rims, the spoked rims as well. Uh, well, the uh, the 650 um, standard 650 model does not come with uh, the shields, and it comes with uh, standard spot rims. So um, I purchased uh, the bike. It was a second. I purchased it uh, second hand. It was uh, about uh, ten months old when I got it. It had only had about three thousand uh, odd kilometers on it. And um, when I bought it, it was just stock standard. Uh, you would not recognize the bike uh, compared to what it is now. So um, I've done about twelve thousand five hundred kilometers on the bike so far over the last. Uh, 12 months um, so I've done a lot of riding and it's been um, a really joyful bike to ride now also this is the lens version um, so it is restricted um, from memory the uh, full non-restricted uh, version has about 75 horsepower sorry whereas the uh, restricted uh, engine has um, close to 50 horsepower now, from what I understand, the uh, the top is the same for both restricted and non-restricted model, and you only really see the difference on at the higher rev range and also at the higher speeds when you're traveling at high speeds. Now, the bike tends to lock up um, with the restriction that it's got. It tends to lock up at about 7,500 RPM. So when you reach 7,500 RPM, that's sort of when it reaches its peak and it doesn't go any further. But having said that, uh, you could quite comfortably take it up to about 140, 150 kilometers per hour, no issues at all. So it holds up on the freeways pretty well. Uh, freeway speed 110, um, no issues, uh, very comfortable. Um, the gear ratios are also really good and um, it's really stable on the freeway. So one of the things that I've also mentioned in my video previously, I had a, a, a Kawasaki Z400 in the past um, and the issue that I found with the Z400 was that it was a very light bike and I found it really challenging riding on the freeways, especially when it's really windy. So this bike has got about 200, it's about 220 uh, kilograms uh, wet. Um, so I find it really, really stable. On the highways, uh, it also has got a 20 uh, liter fuel tank, and uh, with the way I ride at the moment, the 20 liter gives me about 400 to 450 uh, kilometers range. So I use the bike for touring as well as I use it for commuting to work as well. I try to ride once or twice a week to work, and the rest of the time I use it for leisure, weekend rides and also a bit of touring. So that's a bit of a brief on the on the motorcycle. So now I would like to speak about some of the additions that I've got. All right, so let's start with the first item. So here you see the crash guards or the crash bars. Uh, now this crash bars I purchased from AliExpress. Um, they cost about $120. Uh, it took about three weeks for me to get it. They seem to be a uh, pretty solid quality uh, when compared with uh, the other ones that I've seen my few of my other friends use. So for the price, I think um, the quality seems to be quite decent and um, I've had uh, no issues uh, whatsoever 
uh, with the scratch card. Now basically, um, in order to install them, you mount it to the engine subframe on these two parts and then it sort of joins up just there and you go and you connect it to the other side. So all in all, it took about close about half an hour for me to install it. So it wasn't that hard in the large scheme of things. Now, the second thing that I want to talk about is the um, the radiator protector. I'm not sure if you can see it here. Um, it is a little bit dark, most likely. I'll just try to see if I can give you some light. Mm. So, the next thing, as I said to you, is the radiator guards, which again also purchased from AliExpress. Now, this one I paid uh, $14 from AliExpress. Again, it took about two to three weeks to arrive, but it's uh, quite a good addition. Um, one of the main reasons I got this is one for the looks because it says we strong there, but the other main reason is it protects your radiator from rocks and stuff when you go off-road or if you're riding fast. Um, rocks going at high, high speed could easily damage your radiator and possibly cause it to puncture as well. Now, I've also got this um, air valve cap. Again, from AliExpress, really doesn't do anything much, more for uh, aesthetic reasons. Uh, they were cheap, they're about, I think, $2 or so. So, uh, nothing much really on that one. Now, moving on, this one here, which is the headlamp guards. Now, this one I purchased from AliExpress as well. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I would have paid about fourteen to fifteen dollars for it. So, it is uh, a really good addition. I think it made the the bike look really good and stand out with that added on. Uh, it's matte black, uh, and it's also. Uh, you know, made of some really um, steady uh, material, so which is really good. Um, installing it was very easy. Uh, you sort of uh, just open the two uh, Allen key screws here, and then you sort of uh, just bolt them on there. And it's got this quick release bolt, so if you need to clean your your headlamps, all you do is you press them in like this press it in and it sort of releases and you can do it on the other end as well so this thing just comes off you can do whatever you need to do clean your headlamps or whatever wash your bike and then you can reinstall it so putting it back is quite easy just press it back in and as you can see you could almost do it with one hand so not all that difficult here you go that's thin, so it doesn't vibrate or anything. Um, really, very good addition. I quite like it. Uh, again, what it does is uh, obviously the aesthetics, but it also protects your headlamp from large rocks that could potentially damage it. One of the things that I have that I'm not quite happy with with the V-Strong is I don't actually like the looks of the the headlamp. Um, I think that they could have done a bit better if they use LED lamps instead, but it is what it is. So that's a good addition for it. Now, one of my biggest uh, gripes that I had with the motorbike was the buffeting that I had with the standard shield. And I did some research and um, based on my research, I worked out that the Givi airflows are the best ones for you to get. And this, I tell you, has made so much of a difference to riding. No more buffeting, no more headaches uh, whatsoever. So this one I got from Amazon. The links are in the description below. I think I paid about $180 or maybe 100, between $150 to $180. I can't quite remember. It's been about a year now. Um, but really sturdy, really uh, good material. So all you do with this one, it's, you just remove the four original uh, bolts 
that he had uh, on the bike which removes the the original frame and then you install this now this comes in two pieces so basically you've got the levers here you can undo the lever and you can sort of adjust it based on the height that you're comfortable with and if you need to clean the bike all you can do is just slide it all and this part just comes off and you can clean your bike uh, do whatever you need and then install it back so that's how it looks i know some people have also painted this matte black i like it the way it is and it's a perfect fit for the v-strom and trust me if you're looking at uh, investments and mods this is definitely one of the things that you should uh, invest in so as i said you can even adjust the the windshield uh, while you're riding because you can operate it with one hand and sort of um, although i don't think that's really advisable it's best that you stop and uh, make your adjustments moving on quad lock system quad lock system in my opinion is a absolute must so for a quad lock system the first thing it comes in two uh, parts the first thing you need is you need to get a quad lock case so this one here is uh, my, my huawei p30 pro and i've got a quad lock case um, it also comes with a poncho poncho is a, a clear cover that sits on the top and uh, that uh, protects the phone from rain makes it waterproof so quad lock case and then you get the quad lock accessory so what you can see here this part here it's got a bit of a, a cable running so that one there basically is you can see it's a USB connector down there and what that does is uh, charges my phone so it's a uh, it's a quick fast charger you attach your USB cable plugs onto your phone and off you go so charges while riding I've also got this bit here now this one is an optional accessory that you get from quad lock now if you can see what's happening here when I'm moving this thing sort of absorbs the uh, vibration so this is called a vibration damper that you can get from quad lock now quad lock ad, uh, ad, uh, advises that you actually get this uh, for your phones uh, on certain bikes uh, the V-Strom is known to vibrate quite a little bit so uh, it is advisable if you are riding a V-Strom to get the vibration damper so what this thing does is it protects your phone your camera on your phone uh, in which uh, the mechanic the mechanics of the camera uh, doesn't sort of get damaged so definitely a good add-on and um, and then you can sort of mount and adjust the whole mount the way you want some people like to put this facing up you can turn it whichever way you want i've also got uh, this other addition here which allows me to move and adjust the quad lock as i as i use the phone so i can sort of adjust it to the height that i want um, so again those are just uh, accessories that you would get from a quad lock you just get them and you um, attach them and you can sort of start off by buying the basic pack which is your phone case and the basic uh, mount and that's good enough to get you going and then uh, along the way you can buy the um, the charger you can buy the damper you can buy the angle adjuster uh, depending on what you like okay moving on mirrors now these ones are oxford trapezium mirrors uh, very cheap i got it from easy r brisbane i think they are about 30 bucks for the set or was it 50 bucks for the set yeah can't really remember i've got the links in the description if you'd like to uh, buy them check them out from easier uh, quick delivery good stuff now why why i got these mirrors one looks better two it helped uh, with the buffeting as well so um, i realized the stock standard mirrors 
um, because of the angle of the mirror i think that that actually causes the buffeting when i re, re, uh, re, uh, changed that and got these trapezium mirrors man the trapezium mirrors accompanied with the give airflow makes life wonderful when you're riding so definitely look into this very cheap uh, now i must say that the the wistrom uh, standard mirrors are quite old school looking but they are actually quite good mirrors because it's got really good feel of view well this one here as you can see they are a bit um, trapezium ish so probably you don't get as much view as you would get from the standard mirrors but it, i suppose it depends on how you would like to adjust the mirror and if you adjust it to your liking i'm sure it'll work now moving on what's this here heated grips oxford uh heated grips for the suzuki v strom now this one was 150 dollars for the set i installed this myself uh, with another mate of mine it took about two hours to install it it's quite a big job you got to um, remove the original um, grips I, I i removed it properly so i could reuse them if i needed to uh, and then you put in these grips you need to wire it back uh, trade it through and attach it to your battery and then um, you do the same for this side here so again um, good mirrors uh, sorry good uh, grip so the one good thing about the grip is you've got different uh, um, temperature levels that you can set so you can set it at 30 percent 40 50 70 100 depending on how cold it is now what i like about this is if you forgot to turn it off when you got off the bike it actually has got a battery saving mode there so what it does is it it, it notices that your bike is not in use and it will automatically shut down so it's not going to drain your battery so definitely uh, something to add on your bike especially for those of you who are living in victoria or in colder climated countries because it makes it a bit hard riding with in the winter your hands freezing your hands off now here what is this here this is just a, a mount uh, for my gopro or my insta 360 links are in the description below i uh, got this from amazon another mount there for the gopro uh, when i'm recording i've got another mount here sort of sticks out this way to give me a side angle view so again also got this from amazon moving on oh, this guy here is uh, my friend and i call him call her basanti so um she's a wombat that i got from the um Verbi zoo and uh, sticks on to my bike as a magnet and she has basically followed me everywhere so meet basanti guys good mate moving on uh, let's talk about the seats so what you see here is the custom seats by MJM so this is the MJM custom seats um, I bought this seat uh, the guys from MGM they actually are based in uh, in Golden so I was actually lucky um, I actually got this off someone on Facebook he uh, he got it made but he didn't quite uh, I think yeah for some reason he wanted to get rid of it he had basically only used it once so I got it off from him uh, generally I think you would pay between six to seven hundred dollars for a seat like this but I think I paid about two fifty three hundred dollars maybe so definitely um, worthwhile so what they do with MGMs is they actually uh, redesign the whole seat for you based on how your sitting position is so you've got gel pads at the top here and you've got gel pads at the bottom here and it's also got a bit of a rest for your back which is uh, really great um, I've got my stock seat in the garage and I just want to show you what it looks like from the inside 
Okay, so I've removed the MGM seats, so you can see this is what it looks like. Really good quality. And you can see here. So the details are there for those of you who are interested. Um, yeah, he sort of redesigns the whole seat for you from scratch and makes it better than what already is a good, good, good seat. So that's MGM seats, guys. Definitely um, worthwhile. Um, look, to be honest, the, the stock seats are generally quite, quite good. I found um, it not as comfortable when I was riding uh, long distance. So when I got this seat um, available, I figured why not. So hence the purchase of this seat. Moving on. What else? What else? What else? Yes. Let's talk about the Delkivik exhaust system so here i've got the delkovic 35 mm i think exhaust system so this is a it's basically um, a full exhaust system that joins halfway from about this angle this point here so you use your your original header pipe and then it sort of connects uh, from i've got a video uh, on my channel on the Delcovic exhaust system and if you're looking at purchasing one and you want a step-to-step -step guide on how to install it please go on and view my video I've got the description uh, the links to the video in the description as well if you are interested uh, what has the exhaust done for me well it has improved the low end brunt for sure um, not really much um, uh, difference in terms of high end. I do realize that the low end you sort of get a bit more better torque and grunt a little bit, but at the high end it's the same. So again, this is a lamp bike. I'm not interested in you know doing much modification or get it distributed. And it's an easy slip-on system. Well, technically it's not a slip-on, but it's quite easy to get in and get out. So if I were to sell this bike. I can install back the original system and the bike will be back to lamps. So um, no issues there. Um, what I do realize that uh, you get more notice on the road when you have a louder exhaust and I'm a strong believer that loud exhaust saves life. So definitely one of my strong beliefs. It's very important to have a good exhaust system. Um, um, just to get you noticed on the road for sure um, also it adds a lot of joy to your riding so definitely look into an exhaust system moving on i've got the pannier system so the shared sh23 and the set shared sh34 systems now fairly easy to install system now the beauty about the the side boxes the panniers are they cost about 250 dollars uh, for the set i've got the links in the description below if you're interested to buy them um, if you were to ring shed directly and ask them about this box they will tell you that it's not compatible with the v-strom but however i think that information is wrong because I've seen many people use it and you can see I'm using it as well. So it's definitely compatible with the V-Strom. You just need to get the right brackets for it. As long as you get the right brackets for it, it'll be fine. So I've got the links in the description. Please follow those links if you want to get the right matching brackets for the V-Strom. Now, how does this work? We've got the one key that is uh, that works for all three boxes. So one key rules them off um, is the open that's a lock open so it opens like this got a bit of um, stuff in there just my normal um, accessories and stuff in there so it opens this way um, 
and I'll just show you quickly how to remove the box so it's again a quick release so all you do is you do this push it down and put this up that's it there you go so there you go quite easy to remove uh, when you go traveling when you go riding you can actually remove this take it to your room if you like to um, or leave it on the bike it's quite safe so it's got two anchor points it's got this anchor point here that goes up to this part here and you've got the anchor points at the bottom here that goes up here so quite a simple easy briefcase system that you could have now i prefer um, hard cases like this because they are waterproof and you can leave them on the bike I, I i i leave them on my bike as default so i never remove them from the bike they always stay on the bike um, so again uh, if you're traveling for two or three days you can get enough stuff i normally can have my tools in there i can have a bit of clothes on the other box i can carry a backpack or i can have another bag just mounted here if i like to and obviously the top box at the back so let's talk about the top box again again it's a quick release top box as well i won't i won't release the top box but uh, it generally fits but to carry a mask now this wherever you go uh, it generally fits one uh, helmet full face helmet easily and you can have uh, some other um, like your gloves um, goggles or some other little stuff in there so simple simple system um, shared make good quality boxes and um, i've had it for about a year now they haven't decolorized uh, they still work the same so definitely something to consider if you got an adventure bike um, so quite simple as i said to you now moving on spools this spools here i've got a i don't have a double span so if you don't have a double span in your bike you probably need to get one of these spools if you want to put your your bike on a stand so i've got a standalone stand and i attach it to the spools again this was got i bought this from from amazon I think they are what fifteen dollars, so um, cheap stuff. This serves the purpose. Works pretty well. So yeah, so that was the uh, very quick short video on the mods and the accessories that I've added on my Restrom six fifty. And I hope uh, this video has been helpful for you in uh, helping you make decisions on the mods and accessories that you would like to get on your Vstrom and uh, also um, some entertaining information for you as well so again um, thank you for watching this video and thank you for your support over the last six eight months since i started this channel so it means a great deal to me to have the support from all you viewers out there. So um, I really do enjoy making this video. But what I need from you guys is do hit the like and do hit the subscribe button if you found my content interesting and if you would like to get notifications on all further videos. I have not been able to do much riding videos uh, because of the um, lockdown but uh, hopefully it won't be too long now before we can start riding again i've got some new exciting gear that uh, i purchased for my motor vlogging setup and i will uh, make a video sometime soon on sharing with you how i've um, uh, created my motor vlog setup so again like share subscribe and stay tuned for more videos thank you for watching and stay safe stay brave and enjoy riding always see ya
Bye.